I find it funny how much real estate investing has changed my life. And I mean that literally. Everything from how I look at money, how I look at living situations, and even how I look at learning has all changed because I started down the path of becoming a real estate investor. Coming out of high school, I was just like every other American teenager who thought that they would never pick up another book in their life because they didn't ever have to do another book report or do any of that again. So books were in the past. That was until my dad actually gave me a book to read, which is funny enough because I don't think he's read a book since the day he left high school not saying he's not educated he was just never a reader that's for sure so it was funny that that's how it started but once i actually committed to reading that book and everything i learned about it it was a economic book not necessarily investing but on money and it really opened my eyes to like being out of high school you can learn what you want which i found amazing so i started really diving deep into real estate investing into money into self-improvement and out of the hundreds of books that i've read in the past five or six years since leaving high school and actually becoming a reader these are like the three not best books like overall but best books for beginner real estate investors because the ones i'm going to go over today will kind of change your mindset your outlook and just your perspective and completely different look on money, real estate, and really how to earn money too. So I'm going to dive into the three top books that any beginner real estate investor should read. And to be honest, you should probably read this if you're not even looking into real estate, just read it to get acquired and have that knowledge. And maybe you'll find a love for learning like I did through this because after this, I really truly love learning. I read all sorts of stuff now and it's just become a super fun hobby for me. So let's dive right into it. Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Shane Moynihan. I'm a real estate agent and investor based out of Key, New Hampshire. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest around the area, just feel free to hit me up. You can kind of reach me anywhere and I'd be happy to help you out, discuss your situation, see what we can do, and see how I can help you achieve your real estate goals. But in today's video, I'm going to be going over the three books, so let's dive right into them. So book number one is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I don't know if you can see that. But this one is probably one of the most talked about books about finances and money and one of the most popular books probably, I don't want to say ever written, but like for not like storytelling and actually on money, this is one of the, the most popular books there are and definitely gets its way around all the finance communities. And I find this to be a really great book to just kind of start that shift in your mindset of the ways to look at money, the ways to earn money, and what to actually do about money to get ahead in life. Because it really goes over like the separation between the thinking of the poor, the middle class, and the rich. And really just dives deep how the middle class and the poor work for money and they allow their time, they put their time in to earn money. Where the rich actually lets money work for them and they find all the different avenues to keep letting their money work for them so that they don't have to put in the legwork. So it also will dive into just kind of what rich people buy versus what poor and middle class people buy because a lot of poor and middle class people in the book, it says that they buy liabilities. So things like car payments that they can't afford or putting everything on a credit card because they don't have the cash to buy it outright. Where the rich people, they buy assets, which essentially means that they're buying something that's gonna give them a return on that money they invested. So that could be real estate, stocks, businesses, any of that stuff that's gonna earn them money. And to be honest, the book doesn't even really have to do a ton with real estate. It's just talking about the mindset and how you should kind of switch your ways of thinking of earning money and letting money work for you instead of vice versa, you working for money. So I highly recommend this to really anyone, especially young people, because you know, high school nowadays, they do not teach you a damn thing about money or how to look at it because... They don't like to do that. Let's just keep it at that. So this one is definitely highly recommended. Super easy read. I always hate these little books, but that's just me. But it's not a bad book. You'll fly right through it. It's told in a story-esque way of his childhood. So I think it's a very good beginner read, even if you're not a reader, because trust me, I was not a reader when I first read this. Next, we got the book on rental property investing. As you can see by Brandon Turner, Bigger Pockets. I don't know if you are looking into real estate investing, you've probably heard about Bigger Pockets. 
If not, I highly recommend you looking into it. I will admit they've kind of become a little bit commercialized over the last couple of years, but their podcast, the Bigger Pockets podcast, is great, especially if you go back to like some of the older episodes from a few years ago. Like I said, they've really they've grown a ton, which is great for them, great for the business. But to me personally, they've just kind of like, like I said, become commercialized, not sold out, but they're definitely they have a ton of different shows where it was just one show and now it's a bunch of things. But back to the book. The book is great for anyone interested in real estate investing. It really just breaks down everything to do with real estate investing in a simple way, which is why Brandon Turner, he has a bunch of books on real estate and he is one of the best authors I have found on this subject because he knows how to simplify stuff and put it into small stories or just simple explanations of how to do it. Like this book literally covers just about everything from like what you should start looking for, where you should start looking for it, how to put in an offer, how to finance the property, what to do before closings and what systems you want in place to actually manage that property. It is like basically a little textbook type thing, not written as a textbook. Again, this one's another easy read, but it goes over all the basic stuff. Now it's not gonna dive super deep into anything, but it's gonna give you the outline and kind of as a brand new real estate investor just looking into the subject, it'll give you a super good understanding of what to look at, what your niche or certain little area you wanna go into because there's tons of different ways to invest in real estate and tons of different strategies to actually rent out your real estate. So this book really dives deep onto it. It is a few years old. Um, I'm not sure if he's updated or not, but. I know Airbnb has blown up. I don't know if that was mentioned in this book. I read this a couple of years ago, but again, another great book. And uh, it kind of even touches partly on the end. It touches on how to manage rental properties, which is a huge thing to learn. And it perfectly transitions us into that next book. And that next book is the book on managing rental properties. Now this one is by Brandon Turner again, but also his wife, Heather. Apparently when they first started out, she was a super big help in actually managing the units and getting the systems in place to manage everything. And this book like that rental book, it goes through just about everything you can imagine on managing your rentals, which please read this book before actually buying a rental or some type of book on managing rentals, just so you can like actually see what you're going to be getting yourself into. I'm not saying it's anything crazy, but there's stuff you want to have in place. There's laws and rules you have to follow when you become a landlord. So you want to kind of actually be aware of these things so you don't shoot yourself in the foot and get in trouble because you didn't know about it. Because it's not like when you're signing your documents to a multifamily, you get a packet of rules that you have to follow. You just, you have to learn that on your own. So this one is a huge, huge thing. It helps you find, screen, manage, and it really is, again, kind of like a textbook, not written like a textbook, but this one, I still, to this day, I think I first read this five years ago. And I still, to this day, will go back and just reference it almost like a textbook. Just go flip through, see what I'm looking for, and I find it, and then be like, oh, okay. And it really just like goes over everything. One of the biggest things, I believe this book was what it mentioned, was move in and move out checklists. This is massive, a little low blurb on this book because it's a great book in my eyes. And the move in, move out checklist is so simple but it's huge is you literally like, I believe this was the book, but they'll give you a download of all these different uh, resources and different downloads for like, I think they have leases, but those are state by state. So I don't use those, but like their move in, move out checklist. It goes through everything in your unit. So when the day or the day of signing the lease and actually giving the keys to the new tenant, you walk through the apartment with the tenant. You check everything. You discuss and have conversations saying, hey, we're going through this checklist so that we are both on the same page upon move-in of the condition of the property. Both of you sign it, and then when they end up leaving, whenever that time may come, you pull out your checklist. Hey, here's the checklist we did. 
we both agreed this is what it is. So if stuff changes, you did the damage or you caused the problem and it's right there because you have their signature, your signature and the date. So it's a huge thing that I've used since reading this book and one of my biggest takeaways because I haven't really had to call anyone out on it, but it's just helpful. And reading this, especially before you actually invest, makes you come off like a seasoned landlord. Like you know what you're talking about, which you should because you're investing in real estate and supplying people with housing. You should know how it works. So another great read, another easy read. They're pretty good sized books, but nothing crazy. 300, oh, those are all just appendix. Let's see how much the actual book is. About like 290 pages, not bad, easy read. So those are my three book recommendations. I'm probably gonna do more series on this because like I said, I've read hundreds of books and I truly love books. So I might just do some on money, some on, well, finances and different assets like stocks. And then some on self-improvement, big self-improvement book guy, love them. After a, few, after a little bit, some of them get a little bit repetitive. So it's definitely good finding those hidden gems. I like sharing those with people. But these three are perfect if you're kind of on the edge of real estate investing or you're like, I'm going to do it, but you want to get educated. These are great ones to start with and a really good just spot to get into reading too, honestly, because these might kind of catapult you into reading because I truly believe reading is such an underutilized thing. It's crazy how much info is stuffed between 300 pages that you can use. And if you actually apply the stuff you read in books, you will get better in life. Like it's just that simple. They're in there and especially a lot of the older books, like they've stood the test of time. They know what they're talking about. And again, I highly recommend reading these before investing in real estate, but if you're already invested, I still highly recommend picking them up so you can actually read them, learn some good stuff. And again, check out Bigger Pockets. They're a pretty cool website. Not, not a paid for by any means. I wish they did, but um, not, not an advertisement. I wish it was, but they're a really cool site and it's kind of a good spot to meet other investors. Again, it's become a little bit on the edge, but you can go back in their podcast, great information. And who knows, maybe one day you'll be like me who's a little bookworm now, who's a nerd about all the books and I have them all usually in copies because I wanna start a library one day. So I do think when you buy these, buy them and read them physically. Yes, audiobooks are all right, you can fly through them. I use the word fly because people don't actually really take in what they hear sometimes. So I suggest reading them physically. You will not regret it. And it might again catapult you into becoming a reader, which is very, very good. So I really hope this added some value, maybe some new books you haven't heard about. And if they are, tell me what you think about them down below in the comments. If you've read them or if you're going to read them, let me know. I'd be super happy if you actually went out there and put this stuff into use. I think it'll help you a lot in your life. But again, my name is Shane Moynihan. I'm a real estate agent and investor based out of Key, New Hampshire. And if you're looking to buy, sell, or invest, just feel free to reach out to me. If you want to kind of follow more of my day-to-day -day stuff, just follow my Instagram, post there every day, especially on my stories. And I hope you really enjoyed this. Drop a like and a comment and I'll catch you guys next week.